Let's check this one out now. It's uh, number 1645. 1645. I don't know what year it is or anything else about it, but I think it's freaking cool looking just from the inside. Just, just this entryway here, I can tell it's going to be really cool. Probably more my style. I haven't been in here yet, so you're going to be seeing it first with me. But look at this carbon fiber tube for the grab handle. It's carbon fiber up here, aluminum there, and even this this uh, fabric here is kind of carbon fiber inspired. And you got this wild alligator something. I don't know if that's alligator. Something. It's cool. All right. Yeah, I like this thing. Close that door. See those bronze steps. Oh, entry step RGB. Yeah, this one's definitely made for me. They put RGBs in here. I almost never see those. Uh, oh, RGB's in there too. Man. Oh man, they're everywhere. Undercoach RGB. This thing has underglow. All right, I'm sold. Someone give me $2 million. So all these spares, I would just add a bunch of other RGB's to here and just have this thing freaking looking like a strip club in no time. So many freaking buttons. Oh. Main menu. Who said that? Uh, I don't know why it's talking to me. Exit. Why is it talking to me? Carbon fiber up here too, everywhere. Billet pedals. The start stop button looks like it's from a Mercedes. Man, even the, this just caught my eye. Even that's got a pattern on it. I like this thing a lot. This is cool. And the, these countertops light up. I know they do because they make these all like translucent acrylic and they print some kind of like super high resolution marble pattern on the back and light will shine through it. I just got to find the button that does it under counter. There it is. Yes, that's freaking cool. If you don't think that's cool, you can get out of my face. Just saying. But they should have an RGB option. So when it's dark in here, and you got all your other lights popping, you can light up your countertops whatever color you want to because that would be freaking pimp. Got one of them toilets that squirts your butt. That lights up too. And this is actually some kind of granite rock stuff. I don't know exactly what it is, but this is real. That's not some uh, acrylic, that's real rock. And it does still shine through it, which is freaking really cool. I know I keep saying that a lot, but it is really cool. A little vent up there, very stinky poop air. That's not a printed texture, that's actual texture on the material. So all the, it plays with the shadows really cool. These stainless tiles are, I've never seen that before. Junks of stainless steel for tile. How about that? I like that a lot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take note of that for future design of something. I don't know, it's cool. More under counter lights here. That's awesome. And this is the more of the real, the real stone. I don't know how they do that. I don't know if that's a naturally occurring thing or if they somehow push these together and mix it with acrylic or... I feel like, I think this is all real because it's really cold. You know how rocks are like always really cold. I don't know. I mean, maybe that's a really stupid thing to say, but every time you touch a rock, it's just cold. Whereas if you go over here to the, these, they're not as cold. Is that like a real thing? Like when you touch rocks, they're cold. Am I, am I the only person that thinks that? Cause I think that's kind of actually a thing and no one ever talks about it. Sorry, I have ADHD. We'll come back to this later. Need to finish going back this way. Turn the light on. Yeah. RGBs everywhere. I love it. And the default color is red. I think I'm supposed to buy this thing. And the floor. The floor is all one piece. You can see where the slide is only because the gap is just marginally bigger than the actual tile gap. So what will happen is this piece right here, these two tiles, will go down and then the slide will go over it. So the slide is not like a conventional one in like a regular RV where it'll come out and then drop down. This one just goes straight in and out. So it's not flexing the coach body or anything like that when it's moving. 
and it's way, way, way less prone to having an issue or derailing, especially because these ones are electric powered and not hydraulic. So you don't have any like blowouts or anything like that. Uh, Newell switched to electric slides in 03 or 04, I think. Before that, they were uh, typical hydraulic powered and prone to issues just like all the other ones were. But with these, I've watched them. You can like you can shut these off and then push them in yourself. So you don't really have a risk of them getting stuck out. That floor pattern is really neat too. Am I integrating like the stainless into it? I thought these pieces were stainless. Just from back here, I thought that was stainless, but it's just gray marble. And it almost matches the stainless ribs that they put in here. That's a nice little subtle contrast when you get into it. More of this freaking neat stuff back here. Under sink. What? Where does that come from? Oh, okay. It's in here. In there. This is like a glass sink with some kind of texture coating on the back. And then the thickness of it lets them hide this light through here. And it'll still shine through while hiding under the lip. That's, that's, really, that's really neat. Just the craftsmanship and the stuff that they thought about while doing this is blows my mind every time I poke a button in any of these. They're all different. Could be the same year. This could be two years older than the other one, or even a 2009. I poke a button, and I'm like, oh, that's really cool. This is how they did that. Like, that's how I think about stuff. I try to think about how and why they did the things they did. And, like, really get into the mind of the dude that made it. Got a hamper here. They really use space well. There's no waste of space in a duel. And it's finished outside. It's finished the same way. It's all the same, same pattern. No unfinished surfaces. They always go the extra mile. I wonder if this is like one of those steam showers. I think it is. Josh was telling me about that, but I don't remember enough to talk about it. So wait. Yeah, it is steam, has some kind of steam system in here. I don't know how that works because I'm a peasant. Once again, typical shower test, I'm six foot five and I fit in here just fine. Yes, sir. The usual, and they even build the uh, panel access into here. And then they put this pattern on the back of that too. There's nothing unfinished in here. Circuit breaker. Yes, sir. Everything's labeled, so you know what it is. And it's labeled, it's labeled in a way that won't deteriorate over time. The big difference, I mean, mine's a 96 and it's labeled too, but it's literally just a piece of paper that's like laminated by packing tape and then stuck to the inside of that. Where here they actually make actual label plates for everything. So this thing could be 30 years old and it's still gonna be clear as day. Ugh. Turn these lights off. We can see what this looks like when it's lit up. Oh yeah, that's cool. So this is the kind of thing that you could walk around in and like never turn on the overhead lights and still do all your stuff because everything that's like, you know, a normal surface is lit up somehow in some really cool way. Let's turn off the, the bedroom light. Get this to pop a little bit more, yes. All those countertops lit up. Now I'm kind of like, man, what the heck? Why doesn't this light up? How about that? How about that? How about that? So that's what you could do if you are a uh, big baller. You come in here and get one of these custom built yourself. You could walk into ones like these and be like, I like this, this, and that. And then like I just did, well, why don't these light up too? And you know, maybe it costs whatever it costs to get it done, but you're going to do it because you're a baller and you want it. That's what I want to do someday. This is more like, snake pattern something here is this is textured fit and finish of these speakers up in here with the leather got your nice big triangle gotta have your big triangle typical washer dryer in here and you can push these back too so that you can leave it open and not have it sticking out in the way of everything and i've i've noticed that even doing like laundry in mine. Mine does not slide back in, but 
I'll like take it out and then I'll be like, oh, I forgot to grab something. And then I'll have to go like back to the bedroom and get something else, but I'm like running into the door. So having, if you're like actively doing laundry, you can just leave these in and then you don't have to be, you know, messing around with the door, especially if there's multiple people in here coming through, you're trying to get stuff done, just slide it back, don't worry about it. Little stuff like that that they've improved over the years is really cool to see, especially when it's an improvement on a little quirk or issue that I've noticed just on the functionality of mine. Look at this mechanism too. That's some serious beef for a freaking door. It doesn't, doesn't move. There's like no slack in these gears. Sorry I'm geeking out on like the stupidest stuff, but I build things and I notice stuff like this. I get into the builder's head and I try to figure it out. And when, I, when I'm unearthing stuff, it just gets me all pumped. I'm like, what is this little shaft for? This is an axle that connects these, these little gears on these tracks. Well, why would you want that? I'm gonna tell you why. Because these are connected, the door cannot go like this. It can't get all janky and wobbly. It stays on the same plane all the time because it can't vary. It's like having a, a, a spool versus an open diff. That's why this door is so dang solid because these wheels are connected. And that really doesn't need to be there. I mean, I'm sure it would work just fine if it wasn't like that, but it is like that. And it's freaking awesome. It's just, it's the little thing. It just get me all pumped up. Stupid stuff like that, that most people probably would never think of or notice. Fridge in here, even your like handle has texture on it. Sub-Zero, real big. There are two freezers down here. The headroom in here is phenomenal. Again, if you haven't seen it before, I'm six foot five. I can stand on my toes, I can jump. I'm not, I have to like try pretty hard to like hit my head on this. And even here where the slides are, I could stand in this slide. The slide comes over the kitchen counter. I can stand at the kitchen counter and I'm not touching it. That's crazy. Because you're never walking around like just, you know, at your perfect posture or whatever. You're always like doing stuff when you're down here. So you could be taller than me and still not have an issue with this, I guarantee it. And there's, that's really rare. Almost never could you walk into a slide in a coach and not hit your head if you're a tall guy like me. And this backsplash is wild looking too. Man, there need to be some RGB LEDs under here and let that thing reflect the way it needs to be reflected. That'd be wild. This is a neat looking microwave thingy here. It's a, it's got an analog clock with no numbers on it because uh, it's fancy, yeah. No, we don't, we don't need to have numbers in high society. We just look at the clock and we know what time it is because we're fancy and we do that. Oh, like I don't just look at my freaking phone and read it anyway, even if I am wearing a watch. Look at this little coffee table thing. It's even got like the leather alligator print in here the whole way around, the whole way around. And then this is textured. And it's got your nice little surface on here with your feng shui pizza plant thingy that is critical to the strategic structure of the table. Speaking of tables, look at that table. Would you just look at it? It's like reflective. I don't know if this is stainless or it's got like a stainless laminate over it. And it's like partially painted. This thing is cool. I'm a big fan. And then like this. This folds flush so you can't see it. Or boom, got your stuff right there with USBs built in. All your buttons back here for stuff that does stuff and things and whatever. And this little light fixture, it looks like it's about to fire up and take off. Leather up here. Everything's leather. Everything is leather. And back here with the floor and the slide gap. You can't tell where the slide is and where it's not. Unless you really look at it, you see the slightly larger gap. But you can tell here that this part drops. That part's part of the slide. 
and this is not connected to this floor this is an overhang of the slide so when this comes in it looks exactly the same except it's just in man i don't even know what else to look at in here let's go take a look at the outside now i know this thing had a, a really really detailed paint job that i noticed when i was walking up here and we're gonna go check that out now look at this beefy heim rod on here i've seen uh freaking trucks with tie rods that aren't this beefy all that that's gusseted that's tig welded this is a serious mechanism in here you can even see there that's stainless there's stainless steel on this that mechanism part of the step 1645 this is what i was talking about with the paint job it's got all this stuff kind of ghosted into it with this flake it's hard to tell because we're not in direct sunlight let's go back here and it's a little bit more apparent here i'll get my phone light on there it's all there and this shading under here and this is really cool how they do that in in the blue this the, this crinkle stuff here that's like some old school hot rotting techniques like they probably take like cellophane or something and then spray the paint shoot the cellophane with like compressed air so it leaves a weird pattern on it that's just stuff like that is just awesome real gets me fired up because i like seeing all those gassers and stuff with the the lattice roof what's up josh what's up, buddy? How you doing? pretty good just checking it out you do a little click click on it a little bit yeah you interested in any of these you call newell talk to josh josh snyder He's the one who's gonna let me check all this stuff out, help me out out here. But that cool pattern comes all the way back to here. It's just super detailed, everything is. And it even comes in into the like little nooks and crannies. And you can tell it's actually on the grating here also. It's just hard to see. Let's open up the engine bay here and check this thing out. Now that's either an ISX or an X15 Cummins. If it's a new, new one, it's got an X15. If it's a couple years old, it's got the ISX. But look at this coolant tank even. TIG welding on there. It's painted, clear coated, all really nice. Got an integrated hose reel. And it has an integrated pressure washer too. These things actually have deionized water systems in them. So you can take the integrated pressure washer and wash your stuff off anywhere, spot free. Because for those of you who don't know, deionized water when it dries does not leave water spots. Because uh, those water spots are from like the mineral deposits in the water And that gets rid of that That's why like when you go to blue beacon and they wash your stuff off and they don't even dry it That's why it doesn't leave water spots because they blue beacon has deionized water I wish mine had that that's so freaking awesome because you don't even have to wash your coach with that You could just wash your car You could wash your car with the internal water supply of this thing or whatever like that's just the coolest thing ever Let's get a good front view of this paint scheme here. I like that a lot. I like how those things come down, like fang looking right there and through here. I like I like pointy, pointy stuff, pointy paint schemes. I don't know if you've kind of picked up on that. All my stuff that I design looks, it's like got, you know, spikes on it. It just looks cooler to me opposed to, you know, there's nothing wrong with the simple, the simple front ends of that. And that one looks like it's got carbon fiber or something over it, but. This one, this is my standout right here. That's my favorite. And with the deionized water and the onboard air, you have ports for both of them on here. So you could take your pressure washer hose and do it from there. And then there's also one on the front somewhere. There's also one on the front. I don't know if we'll be able to see it. So the hose is long enough so that if you're connected to either one of those between the two ports, you can do the entire thing without a problem. That's your uh, pressure washer port for the front. Nice and hidden, but it's there when you need it. You can take note that it's got this little pull handle here that is fastened with stainless Allens underneath. On this one over here, it's on the top. I'm like, what the heck, that's weird. That's not original either. And this is up here, but the holes are still down here. So the original owner of this thing must have you know, done their own little modification and stuck it up here and put this thing on and also put carbon fiber vinyl on the front. So uh, I kind of want to look in this thing, see what other kind of, you know, custom touches the last owner has done to it. I just noticed something that I've never seen before. 
Okay, look at look at what's behind me right now. All right, take a mental picture. Look at what's behind me right now. It's the same thing. It's the same paint job. Bruh. What? I've never seen that. There's no way. This must be a freak coincidence that the original owner of both of these was the same person. And it just so happens to be that their used one is parked next to their old used one. Because I've never ever seen the same two paint jobs on any of these before. Ever. And I just looked at the entire file cabinet of paint schemes from every single coach from 1993 until now. They're all in there. Except for mine, apparently. But they're all in there. And the only person I've ever seen do the same thing more than once is uh, Chip Ganassi. Every time he gets a new one, he uses like the same paint job, but just changes a couple things on it. He's been doing that, using the same one since like the 90s, which is pretty awesome. But this makes the first time I've ever seen twins in person. The 2020i is this body style with the higher mount taillights. And then these ones are the P50s. The, uh, the P50 was the new style after the 2020i. So that was probably that guy's first one. And then he got a new one, which was that one. And then he must have a new one now or just doesn't have one at all, something like that. I don't know. If you haven't made it this far and subscribed already, you should definitely should. And check out my Instagram at Stapleton42. Um, my profile picture is Escalade and all that stuff, so you'll see it when you search it. And heck, man, there's so many videos on my channel from months previous from working on this thing, working on the Escalade. Go check them out, because they're all the same. Like, my... My production quality has not changed since like the very beginning. I've been filming my videos doing everything the same way since day one. 